All right, so I want to factor this polynomial. How many? Um, question or answer? Yeah, there's two terms. So what was the first factor you mentioned? We're going to start with two terms. Okay, is there a greatest common factor between those two terms? Okay, they can both be divided by one. Yeah, there's no other number other than one. But is there anything else that those two terms have in common? They both have at least one x. So there is a greatest common factor here, just that that greatest common factor is x. What do we do with common factor? We factor it out. How do we factor it out? It's like opposite distributive property, backwards distributive property. So I'm going to get that common factor. I'm going to bring it out, and I'm going to write a parenthesis. If I started with two terms, I should still have two terms inside the parentheses. It's just that those two terms that are left over will have been divided by the x. It depends on the way that your brain thinks of things. If you think better in terms of dividing, then divide. If another way that it could be taught is say, hey, since factoring is the opposite of simplifying, and like in this case we're specifically doing the opposite of distributive property, I, I, don't, want to, I don't want to distribute because if I distribute, I'm going to go backwards. But if I were to distribute, what would I have to multiply by to get what I started with? So like for instance, x times what gives me x squared? Yes. So that's what I would write first. I don't want to distribute, but that's what I'll get. If you want to think of it as division, what is x squared divided by x? It's x. You know, what is negative 2x divided by x? Two. Negative 2. So I don't want to distribute, but if I did distribute what I have here, then um, I would get what I started with. Okay. Well, if you look at the parentheses, we still have two terms. And with two terms, we still have factoring methods. We have a difference of squares. But, and, and look, we even have a difference. But in order to be a difference of squares, both terms that are inside need to be perfect squares. Neither of these are perfect squares. 2 clearly isn't a perfect square, and x is not even quadratic. In order, to be, in order for a variable to be a perfect square, it has to have an even exponent. What exponent does that x have on top? 2. two. Yeah. Well, what? It's got a 1. If you don't see anything, it's got a 1. I would need it to have a 2 or a 4 or a 6 or an 8, but right now I have a 1, so no more factoring. Is this polynomial prime? No. No, why not? Because it had a greatest common factor. It had a greatest common factor. Okay. So this is the exact same polynomial. It's just, oh, no. It's just that... Up here, it was in simplest form, and then down here, this is in factor form. A polynomial is only prime when nothing works. Something did work. Here's another one. How many terms? There are three terms. With three terms, we're out for first. Greatest common factor. Do these three terms have a greatest common factor? Yes. Yeah, well, that's, if I started writing, it probably does. Let me, what can all those terms be divided by? Seven. Good. Now, like, uh, like or unlike the last one, um, do all three terms have a variable in common? You can't forget to look for the variables. Huh? No, they don't. So what are we going to do? We're going to get that greatest common factor. We're going to bring it outside. We're going to start parentheses. And if I started with three terms, I should end up with three terms. Greatest common factor should not add or remove the amount of terms. It's just that these terms that are going to be on the inside now will have been divided by seven. Backwards distributive property. What is 14y squared divided by seven? 2y squared, OK. What is 7y divided by 7? Nakai, good, why? And then what is negative 21 divided by 7? Somebody raise your hand, speak up. Negative 3, thank you. So you guys are mumbling, man. So what do they feed you for lunch? Maybe like um, what's that called? Uh, Nyquil for like for lunch? 
No Nutella today? But they were not Nutella, but they were on sun. Okie dokie. We have now factored, okay, this, this polynomial is not prime, but you're going to see in many occasions that the directions are going to say factor completely, which means that you might be able to factor more than one way. And if you look on the inside, how many terms do we still have? We still have three. And this is still quadratic, so there's a chance, the possibility that we might be able to factor more. What's the next thing we try with three terms? See if we have a perfect square trinomial. And the good thing about that is half of that is visual. I don't, I can, you know, not waste any of my precious life or very little of it just checking it because it's, it's, half of it's visual. Like how do I know just by looking at this that that's not a perfect square trinomial? There's three different reasons you could tell me. Any one of them are enough. In order to be a perfect square trinomial, first and last term have to be both positive and perfect. And then after that, then, then it has to make sure that b squared equals 4 is c. But just that first criteria I gave you, I see there's three things that are violating me. Adam? What's a perfect square? Perfect squares are numbers that you can get by multiplying another number times itself. So like 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. Or you can, you can also describe it as a number that you can take a square root of and not get a decimal. Three reasons why this is not a perfect square trinomial. It shouldn't take this long. Somebody, just give me any one of them. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that, that's the easiest one. Sure, bam. If the, that last term is negative, three is negative. Okay. Yeah? I didn't do that. Yes? Good, yeah. Even though y squared is a perfect square, 2y squared isn't because there is no number that I can multiply times itself to get 2. So 2y two squared is not perfect. You can also say that 3 is not perfect. Those are three reasons. But if any, if just one of them are true, I cannot have a perfect square trinomial. So there's only one more possible way I could factor this trinomial. One more way. In the notes. Do a factor chart. Yeah, do what I call the factor chart. In order to do a factor chart, we're going to identify that P values A, B, and C. What's in the A position? Two. What's in the B position? One. And what's in the C? So we are going to do a table. And I'm no, I'm no longer going to write the A, C, and the B part because now we already know where these numbers are coming from. At the top of the first column, I'm going to write A times C. What is A times C? Negative six. On the top of the B, uh, the second column, I'm just going to write B, which is one. In order to try to make this easier for you, because it's hard enough to know your times tables without throwing in signs. So in order, to try to, in order to try to make it easier for you, I just told you, well, you worry about the timetable part. Let me worry about helping you with the signs. So I'm going to start off here on the left side in my multiplication column by thinking of all the numbers that I can multiply to get 6. Not negative 6, just 6. What are all the numbers you can think of that multiply to give you 6? Colin? 1 and 6. 1 and 6, that's an obvious one. And 2. Oh, this is easy. Oh, yeah, 6, is, six doesn't have that many factors. Then I came in the back side and I said, OK, um, I'll take care of the signs for you. If the number at the top of the first column is negative and the, and the number on the top of the second column is positive, what do the factors have to be? What has to be true about the Small factors? Small, negative, and big. Positive. What? X and Y. What? Small, negative, and big. Positive. Small, negative, big, positive. So I go to every combo, and I'm going to make the smaller one negative and the bigger one positive. And then the question is, do any of those add up to 1? Yeah. Yes. Which one? Two negative 2 and 3. Well, all of this we did yesterday, okay, but something is new here that you may have not realized, and this is, out of all the factoring problems, these are always the hardest ones, I just, I cannot get, I cannot get the average student to, uh, to remember this, so over the years I've kind of let go of trying to teach this the way that it's supposed to be taught, and I kind of try to teach a, um, an oversimplification of the process, I guess. I just, there's certain things that mathematically are not that sound about this, this method, but 
It's just I'd rather you get it right than anything. So here's why. You, here's what you may or not realize. This, this is what we did not do yesterday. A is not one. When A is one, it's real simple. You get those uh, numbers that you just got in, in the table. You get the variables. You drop them down into their own parentheses. Thank you very much. So this is going to be a little bit different. Now I tried to prepare you for this yesterday by saying, all right. There's going to be two parentheses, and there still are, just like there was yesterday. And the second number in those parentheses is still going to be the ones we found in the chart. That hasn't changed. But if you remember, instead of just simply telling you to just write the variable first, which that's the way it's usually taught, I also told you, hey, get that A and attach it next to it. But yesterday, A was 1. So what's 1 times anything? Oh, like itself. itself. So like if this one, if A would have been 1 here, well, 1Y one is just Y, so you just write Y. But I did tell you to attach that A, and that's what we need to do. If you hear A is not 1, I'm going to go in each parenthesis and write 2Y, two 2Y. Two also, we can't forget at the very beginning we took out a 7 that needs to stay in front. That's just dropping down. It's just there. But the thing is, we're not done. Remember that this is just the backwards, this is the opposite of distributive property. I should, at any point in this process, and this is kind of why I don't like this method, but it tends to be simpler for the children. Like, if I follow this, I, I'm not going to get what I started with, so that's a problem. But there's a way to fix it. Now I'm going to go to those parentheses, and if any of the parentheses have a greatest common factor, I'm going to divide it out. I'm not going to do anything with the number. This, the final form of this is still going to be the 7. It's still going to be the 7. With, um, with a parenthesis and a parenthesis. It's just that we don't know what are going to go on this parenthesis yet. But by writing the A in front, okay, I wrote the A here and the A here in front of the Y. I need to look for a common factor. If any of these parentheses have a common factor, I need to divide it out. In the first parentheses, can those two be divided by the same number? Yeah, they can both be divided by 2, so I'll go ahead and do that. And that's what I write. What's 2y divided by 2? Y. What's 2 divided by 2? On the second parentheses, can any of those be divided by the same number? So you just drop it as if it was high. This, this, there's a process that you like really the way it's supposed to be done is a little bit more lengthy if I want it to be more mathematically sound than this it's a little bit and it's not even lengthy it's not even that much longer but it requires a better understanding of algebraic principles so this is the easiest way I know how to show you what are the hardest problems quadratic trinomials three terms when a is greater than one if you, if you choose to do the Khan Academy lesson for your next assignment, remember there's nothing to do this weekend, but if you choose to do the Khan Academy one, they have one just on those, which is up, where A is greater than one. Any questions on that one? Do you always divide the first one by two? Do you always divide the first one by two? No, it isn't so much about dividing by two, it's looking to see if I have a common factor. The reason why I divided the first one by 2 is because both of these terms were able to be divided by 2. If they, if, like, let's say that I would have said uh, 4y minus 8. What can I divide both of those by? More than 2. If there's a bigger one. Huh? By 4, divide them by 4. If this would have said uh, 4y divided by uh, 4y minus 6, what can I divide both of those by? By 2, I would have divided them by 2. And if there's more than one number you can divide by, divide by the biggest one. See, the difference between that and greatest common factor is the greatest common factor, when I divide a number out, I bring the number out in front. Whereas at the end here, when you divide this number out, you don't do anything with it. You just throw it away afterwards. Three terms again. What do we look for first? 
What do we always look for first? Greatest common. Greatest common factor. But if you guys do what you're supposed to do and you do your assignment, you do problem after problem after problem after problem after problem after problem, after problem you're going to start to realize uh, certain realities. And the reality is that uh, when your lead coefficient is 1, like you have here, you're typically not going to have a greatest common factor. But I'm just driving it home because I don't want you to forget because then when it's not 1, then you're going to forget. So you should always check for it first. Don't, don't like lull yourself to sleep and forget to, to check. But yes, here there is no greatest common factor other than 1, so I can ignore it. Martha? What do I look for next with three terms? What do I look for next? Martha, 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 what do I look for next? Hmm? The A, B, and C. No, I'll just you, I gave you a list. It's on the first page. It tells you all you have to just follow the column straight down. Per look for perfect square trinomial. The nice thing is that part of that is visual. Just look at that. Are the first and last term positive? Yes. yes. Check. Are the first and last term perfect? Yes, they are. What times itself gives you x squared? X. What times itself gives you 1? One, so that, that's good. So if all of that works out, okay, well then we're going to go ahead and identify ABC. But I cannot say that this is a perfect square trinomial unless this passes the test I showed you yesterday, which was B squared, which is 2 squared, is equal to 4. Yes, it's always a 4. There's always a 4 there as part of the formula. I told you to write it down. Times A times C. So times 1 times 1. Yesterday we tried this and it didn't work. But it didn't take us that much time. Georgiana, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Let's see if you're thinking about something. What are you thinking about? Two squared is four. Four times one times one is four. Yay! Look at that! For the first time ever! It worked. Didn't get prime. No, what do you mean prime? We just did, we just saved ourselves from having to do a chart. Because the test for perfect square trinomial works. So now what you do, because this is considered a special case, it's considered a shortcut, is now we are going to factor by formula. We did the test for perfect square trinomial and it worked. Okay? So if you look at the factored form of perfect square trinomials, what do they have in common? Well it's only gonna be one parenthesis, and you're gonna put a square on the outside. Okay? The sign in the middle comes from the sign in the middle of the um, of the trinomial. And then after that, all we gotta do is figure out what goes there, and that's just the square root of the perfect squares. That might sound too difficult, but it really isn't. Let's go back here. Uh, where were we? So we decided it works, so I'm gonna write one parenthesis because that's what every perfect square trinomial looks like. With a square on the outside, well, what's the sign in the middle? Square. Positive, so I'm going to keep it positive. And then all I have, remember when I asked you about those perfect squares? Just give me the square root of each one. What is the square root of x squared? x. dx. What is the square root of 1? Ta-da! Finished. Finito. Done. Factor form the polynomial, the simplest form of the polynomial, also known as standard form. When you go home this weekend and you're bored because you've already finished your assignment and you have nothing else to do, um, take this, change it to multiplication and foil it. You're going to end up with that. Is that, is that what you do when you bored and you foil? Have you ever fooled while playing the trumpet? And eating Nutella at the same time? You can't do that, otherwise you can't eat Nutella the trumpet. No, you can eat Nutella with the left hand, play the trumpet with the right hand, and uh, foil with, with your toes. You can't get it in this You can't get the trumpet? No, you can't get food, you can't Oh, because you have to blow into the trumpet. Yeah. Hmm. That's true. Maybe 
maybe one day we can figure that out. Uh, three terms, what do we look for first? Greatest common factor, but the more of these that you do, you will get used to the fact that uh, when you have a one in front, you're probably not going to have a greatest common factor. So Adam, if we don't have a greatest common factor, let's just identify A, B, and C. A out in front is 1, B is negative 18, and C is 81. But before we get carried away and do a chart, let's see if maybe we have a perfect square trinomial. Are the first and last term positive? Are the first and last term perfect? Yes, they are. So let's do that test to see if we can save ourselves a chart. B is negative 18, so let's square that. That would have to be equal to 4 times A times C. Where are my calculator people? Lily, you looking for the calculator? No, I'm looking for my grapes. Aww. Marquise is the only one with a calculator. And he's falling asleep. Negative 18 squared is 324. So is 4 times about 1 times 81. It worked. Yay, I have a perfect square trinomial. So on the last example, what did I tell you it's going to look like? Not two parentheses. Four parentheses with a square on the outside. Keep the sign in the middle, which was negative. And now just drop down the square roots. What's the square root of k squared? A. A. What's the square root of 81? Ta da! Believe that. <coughs> Any questions there? Brandon, how many terms do you see? Two. Okay. What do we look for first with two terms? Okay, now you definitely want to be aware because A is not one here. Like out in front, there's not a one. Uh, so you definitely want to be aware of a greatest common factor. But is there a number that all uh, that both of those can be divided by? No. There is not. But being that there's two terms, when I go look at my notes, I follow that column down, and there's only one other possible way that two terms can be factored. Give me the name. It is different to squares. And this is very similar to a perfect square trinomial, but in English, there's nothing to write. It's either just, you can do it in your head. Is there a difference there? Yes, it's subtraction. Now, it's not like the perfect squares that have to be first and last. It's, there's only two terms. Both two terms have to be perfect squares. Is 4x squared a perfect square? Yes, what's being squared there? Why don't you talk with your mouth open? Just don't be shy. You had it right. Two X, good. What's the square root of 49? Seven. Yay, yeah, 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 it worked. Nothing else to do. But what you do have to do is know the formula for a difference of squares. Once you acknowledge that you have a difference of squares, I ran out of candy, but if I didn't, this would definitely be a candy question because it shows me that you pay attention. What does a difference of squares look like in factored form? We gave it a name. Yes. Oh, a name? Mm -hmm. Conjugates. Good. It took my second period like five minutes to figure that out. Good. Yes, conjugates. What are conjugates? Well, conjugates are real simple. It's going to be two parentheses. So Kiara will go back to two parentheses now. I'll see that. One parenthesis will always have a plus, one parenthesis will always have a minus. What goes on each side? The two little numbers in the bubbles. In the bubbles. 2x, 2x. 7, 7, yay! While you're foiling and trumpeting and eating Nutella this weekend, foil that one too. You'll see that eventually you will end up with what you started with.
we've talked about how factoring is evil and the children don't like factoring and it's so hard and stuff. I've, I've always kind of had a little bit of an ethical conundrum when it comes to this, but I know that nowadays teachers teach it and stuff. Like, let's say you're taking an EOC at the end of the year and you're being asked to factor, but we don't like the factor, and they give you multiple choice. What do the children do? Since they, if they, as long as they understand that factoring and simplifying are opposites, they start off with the answers, and instead of going this way to factor, they go this way to simplify and see what matches the question. They're opposites. Which instead of going backwards, they go. instead of using the question to find the answer, they use the answer to find the question. Naughty children. Okay, this is a little bit different. How many terms do you have? There are two terms, but what's different here when you realize that not a, this is not quadratic. What does quadratic mean? When I put the adjective quadratic in front of anything, what does it mean? Doesn't it mean like the x is squared? Good, it means second power, yeah. Quadratic means second power, it means the x is squared. When the x is not squared, or let me rephrase, if, if the x is not at least being squared, this is another word. What, what, what's the power of the x there? That's a one. What do you call it when the variable is being taken to the first power? What do you call it when the variable is being taken to the first power? It starts with L and ends with linear. Linear. It's called linear, yeah. When you have a linear polynomial, there's only one thing that's going to work, and that's GCF. If GCF doesn't work, nothing's going to work, and it's prime. You don't have to worry about anything else. So the only question is, does this have a greatest common factor? Do these two so can both of these terms be divided by the same amount? Yeah, two. Four. Four, yeah. The two works. Two is a common factor, but it's not the greatest common factor. But, well, wait, there's more. When it comes to linear polynomials, yeah, like four would work, and I personally don't have a problem with it, but depending on who's assessing you, uh, like, like there's no math rule that says you cannot have this. But a lot of times, if you're, if you're going to take out a GCF, you might as well take out the negative out in front. They don't, they don't like to leave a negative in front of a polynomial. So that can be accomplished by getting this 4 and just making it negative. Like if the direction said to factor and you factor out a 4, I don't have a problem with it. But there's a good chance, especially like if you see a multiple choice somewhere, that that's not going to be an option. They're probably going to take out a negative 4. We started with two terms. We're still going to have two terms. Just divide each one by negative. Adam, what's negative 40x divided by negative 4? 10. Negative 10. No, no. Well, you have to write the first time 10, but don't forget the x. Georgiana, what is 28 divided by negative 4? Mm. 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 Are you thinking about Lily's Mandalore uniform costume? how fabulous it was. It was. She got rave reviews on Halloween. Yes? Negative. Negative what? Negative. Wait. Oh, seven. And that's it. It's linear. There's something else that can be done. Factor. You have been factored. Yeah. I think it's a negative four. Because that's the biggest Really, the biggest number that both of these can be divided by is 4. The reason why I made the 4 negative is because if you're taking some type of a standardized assessment, or if you look into a book somewhere, like even though there's no rule that says that this has to be so, they don't like to leave negatives in front of polynomials. So if I factor out the negative 4, that's going to, instead of being a negative 10, it'll make it a positive 10 on the inside. But really, like the only difference would be if you would have got out a 4, then the 10x would have been negative and the 7 would have been positive. I, I don't have a problem with either answer, but like let's say you're taking an EOC at the end of the year and it's multiple choice, and they ask you what this looks like in factored form, you are much more likely to see this as a possible answer than, than the one in blue. Laffy Taffy? No. Yellow Candy?
What's a little bit different here? They have different things. Oh, okay, yeah, that's good. Uh, we have three terms, which that we've seen before, but now look at the biggest exponent. When it comes to factoring, the vast majority of the factoring, even in algebra 2, that we do involves quadratic methods. We, we don't have much that we can do when we have more than quadratic, when the exponent is bigger. So, yeah, there's a couple things that can be done, but really, the, the only thing that you would have to really know in algebra 1, there's, there's one exception that I can think of, but we're not even going to worry about that now. Um, let's look for a GCF. Because if we can bring out a GCF that has a variable in it, you'll see what's going to happen to the exponents. They're going to drop. Okay. okay, well, yes, the GCF here for, the, for the, the coefficients is 10. But do they all have variables in common? Don't forget to look for variables, too. No, you, you don't see that they all have ends? Mm -hmm. oh, I see that they all have ends. So they definitely each at least have one end. But let's just that word at least. What is the minimum amount of ends that all of them have? They all have at least three. So I'm going to take them all out because that's the greatest common factor. Yeah, they can all be divided by n. I mean, they can also be divided by three of the ends. You know, divide by n, divide by n, divide by n. So that's what I'm going to pull out. I'm going to pull out a 10, n to the third. Let's see what's left. 50 divided by 10 is? 5. 5. If I started with 5 ends, but I've divided out 3 of them, how many ends are left? 2. Two. 50 divided by 10 again is 5. Is 5. If I started with 4 ends and I divided out 3 of them, how many are left? 1. Negative 20 divided by 10 is? Uh, two. Negative 2. If I started with 3 ends and I divided them all out, how many ends are left? Two. Yeah, all the little ends went to the market. I have not factored by greatest common factor, but on the inside, I have three terms, and they are quadratic, so there is a chance that it can be factored further. And if the directions say factor completely, and it can be factored further and you do not, then it's going to be wrong. Yeah, you might get partial credit, but you, know, you might not. So, okay, with three terms, what can we still try that we haven't tried yet? What's the thing that we try next? Perfect square trinomial. So I can just look at it and tell that it isn't. I can still see here three reasons why it isn't. Can somebody tell me what are any one of the three reasons why that can't be a perfect square trinomial? Jada? If you divide it, it'll give a decimal. No, I wouldn't one of them. Two You can say that two is negative, that's enough. Because the first one I have to be positive. Now, the other reason, Jada, is not that you can divide, is that you can't take a square root. 2 is not perfect, 5 is not perfect, so let's not waste our time, but we do have to try a factor chart. 5, 5, negative 2. A times C is? Negative 10. Uh, B is? 5. What are all the numbers you can think of that multiply to give you 10? 1 and 10, 2 and 5. When the first column is negative and the second column is positive, Small. Brandon, it's a small negative and a big positive. Do any of those add up to 5? No, this gives me 9 and this gives me 3. None of these match up with the 5. So all that means is that a factor chart won't work. We have exhausted everything that we can do. Nothing else will work. But since something already did work, GCF did work, I can't say that this is prime. The only thing I can do is say that this original polynomial, the most that I can factor it is what I had before, which is 10n to the third times 5n squared plus 5n minus 2. I can't do anything else. That is completely factored for.
we have questions asked. You want to try to do that one on your own? Raise your hand if you got it. I'll give you like a minute or two. Facts of that, you already finished it? And okay, well then give it a real chance. I don't have any candy anyway, so. Did you finish all the examples already? Yeah. She's saying is that she was only able to find the greatest common factor and that that greatest common factor was five. Let's see if she's right or not. What do you think, Georgiana? Do you think she's right? And is always right. So uh, yes, the biggest number that they, they can all be divided by is five, so I'm gonna bring that out. Divide every return by five, seven x squared plus eight x minus 10. But we can't just automatically leave it that way. Have we factored? Yes. Have we factored completely? We don't know. Now I know I know this can't be a greatest common uh, a perfect square trinomial. Why not? Let me let me let me here. Wakey wakey. Why can't this be a perfect square trinomial? What's not a perfect square? Yeah, but I only care about two of them. Show me. Jada. In order to be a perfect square trinomial, the first and last term have to be positive. That's the first thing. So I think the easy one to say is that Mr. Romero, that's not a perfect square trinomial because the 10 is negative and that's enough. But if you wanted to take it a step further, the first and last term have to also be perfect. Why is a, a 7x squared not perfect? Because 7 is not a perfect square. If you take the square root of 7, you get a decimal. Why is a 10 not a perfect square? For the exact same reason. Okay? But that doesn't mean it can't be factored. It just means we got to try a chart. So 7, 8, and negative 10. 7 times negative 10 is negative 70. The second column is just going to have the 8 on top. What are all the numbers that can multiply to get 70? 1 and 70, 2 and 35. Uh, 3 doesn't work, 4 doesn't work, 5 works with 14, and 7 and 10. When the first column is negative and the second column is positive, what types of factors do I need to include? What, what can I do to adapt, to adjust my factors accordingly? What can I do to adjust my factors? Big positive, small negative. Yeah, then I think that's the second time today we're the same one. But when I add 
all those again, 69, 33, 9, and 3. Do any of those match up with the 8? No, that's the reason why Anne said that she could not factor any more than that. We just stayed with what we had before. You sad because the weekend's here? Looks happy. Mm -hmm. We're in the club. Mm -hmm. We just had a tired club. Mm -hmm. Lily can be vice president. Though Gianna will be the, the uh, secretary, the recording secretary. Mm -hmm. Martha will be the treasurer. Are we doing this right now? Yeah, sure, why not? Like, I, I think, uh, like, starting now, this last half of the packet is mostly review. I've already done at least one type of effort. So we'll do as many as we can. We have like 10 minutes left. We'll do as many as we can. And then the rest of them, you can try on your own. And if you have any trouble with it, come in in the morning on Monday and we'll go over them before we move on to equations. times 30 is 30 and then negative 11 what are all the numbers that can multiply to get 30 1 and 30 2 and 15 3 and 10 4 no 5 and 6 I gave you a little cheat sheet that says that when the first column is positive and the second column is negative what are the only factors I need to consider all negative good all negative good I always get people telling me oh small positive big negative no if I'm going to multiply and get a positive, they have to be the same sign. So what, do any of these add up to negative 11? Yeah. Yes, they do. So Jada, that's why we weren't done. Lily, that's why we weren't done. Because this works. The more of these you practice, this is not going to learn itself. I tried to warn you. I didn't want to scare you, but I tried to warn you that, that you know, this is universally regarded as the hardest part of Algebra 1. But if you practice, if you practice, if you practice, you're going to learn. It's almost like, like this, you're going to get this feeling of joy coming about you when you have an A, that's a, when you have a lead that's one. Because now there's no extra steps. As long as I can get the chart to work, 
it's just going to be the um, the GCF, which was three. The variable was k, so k minus five, and then k minus six. Occasionally, I might get a question say, but Mr. Romero, how about if I wrote k minus six first and then k minus five? That's fine. Well, you can't mess up other signs. Yes. Yeah. 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 If you put k plus five or k plus six, that's fine. Yeah. 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 Right, Brandon? Brandon hates to be wrong. Hates it. Oh, I just realized that you guys sit next to each other. A lot of times you guys have your hair in your face. You guys have that in common. Yeah, you sit next to Brandon and hair. I'm so jealous. I wish my hair covered my face. All right, see if you can do this one. This one should be simple. Uh, fair warning, if you have aspirations of going on to algebra 2 and beyond, eventually, not, not this year, but eventually, this is something you should be able to do in your head. Because the fact that A is 1 makes this like a 30 second problem. Shouldn't take very long. Maybe for you guys now, it's maybe like 90 seconds, but... If you know your times tables, this, and you're good with mental math, this does not take long at all. You got it, Colin? What'd you get? Uh, a plus 3, A minus 8. No, you got it backwards. A plus 8, A minus 3. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright, so let's go over that. Do we have a greatest common factor? Yeah? Oh. No, we don't. There is like a like out in front here we have a 1, so it's not very likely we're going to have one. They don't have variables in common, so I don't have to worry about that. Could this be a perfect square trinomial? No, 24 is negative, it's also not perfect. So let's do a factor chart. A is 1, B is 5, C is negative 24. 1 times negative 24 is negative 24. And then we have 5 in the second column. Think of all the numbers that you can think of that multiply to give you 24, 1 and 24, 2 and 12, uh, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. When the first column is negative and the second column is positive, what do you know about your factors? Is that true, but which one? Because I was more specific with you. The small is negative and the big one's positive. It is the third time today we do one like this. Do any of those add up, add up to a positive 5? Yeah. Yes, they do. And because the lead was 1, I can just say now a minus 3, a plus 8. If you would have said a plus 8, a minus 3, that would have been fine. But see, Colin got it wrong because Colin messed up the signs. He said a plus 3 and a minus 8. Another very common mistake, and it depends on how mean your teacher is, I guess, is that the kids, just, they get so used to putting x, 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 x for everything that here they'll put x minus 3 and x plus 8. The problem is, what were the variables? No, what were the variables up here? A. The A's. Oh, oh. Sounded like an x, right? My A's not too bad. Oh, uh, here, let's, 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 let's make this one the last one here, real quick. We've got two minutes before the call. Is there a GC ever? Let's do it together. Three, three yes, these can all be divided by three. When I bring out the three, this leaves me r squared plus 9r minus 10. This can't be a perfect square trinomial because 10 is negative, it's also not perfect. So a is 1, which is great, we love that. b is 9 and c is negative 10. Two numbers that multiply to negative 10 and add up to 9. So 1 and 10, 2 and 5 under this scenario. Again, negative, negative, positive, positive. Uh, do any of these add up to 9? Yes, this one does. So we have the 3 that we took out from the GCF. Then we would have R minus 1 and R plus 10. Try 
how to do these on your own. If you get stuck, um, come see me Monday. So we're going to move on to the equations on Monday.